And I just wanted to highlight again, other ways um, of dressing uh -oh, the reflex. Um, so we saw our little girl right on Tuesday. Right. Remember we talked about, look at the eyes, look at the face, right? And um, we could see that with her, looking at her face where her eyes are positioned during this activity. And what we did was increase her body awareness when we go to the next slide. Um, we increased her body awareness by adding weights, right? It's proprioceptive input. Um, look at the difference in her face from the first one to now, right? She's counting, she's more engaged. She's still relying on, you know, she's looking towards the floor, but we see a difference in movement. And that was also with that rhythm. We were giving her rhythmic patterns. Music would be great, as Karen said, to get those brain oscillations going as well. Anything you wanted to add to that, Karen? Um, I would like to add the child acted confused when the therapist was barking instructions. We're all guilty of telling a child, do this, do that, do this, do that, raise up high or touch, touch. <clears throat> if you can stand in front of a child and mirror their activities, give them verbal instruction and mirror instruction, then let them go at it because they need to do the processing. Mm -hmm. If they're busy receiving hearing and just vision all at the same time, it's difficult for their output to be very, very clear. Yeah. And many times I will tell therapists that are working with me, count to 10 before you ex expect a result. Because sometimes when we have children that do have difficulty with sensory processing, they are engaged in their lower brain centers. It takes them longer to process. You're mm -hmm. not going to get an instant response or an instant uh, verbal response, much less motor response. So count to 10. You may need to count to 20. But mm -hmm. just wait. And then if you need to correct them, give them very short instruction and very gentle and they won't go into fight or flight. If you're above them and you're speaking loudly to them or you're above them and speaking right to their face, they may go into fight or flight and you can't uh, understand instructions if you're running from a lion. Mm -hmm. Agreed. And some of these illustrations too allow us to see how they would respond, let's say in a typical classroom, right? to the defense of uh, one of my former students in that video. <laughs> but and then that's exactly right. You know, this is illustrating how she's kind of the dysfunction, if you will. Um, but when you are planning out your sessions, you want to decrease the verbalization. And I, I use sign language a lot as well.